Hello techies! Welcome to our brand new video series focused on helping you get the most of your experiences in life. Before we start the video, let's know about Uptalk. Uptalk is a live, interactive platform for software training, furnishing robust personalities who could take on universal business platforms. And it the first message was identifying eligibility and data changes for 356 workers. Right, that is what it did. It was looking at all the workers and trying to find out data changes. And what I had done, I had only. I was only running it for one day, but still it was looking at all 356 workers and looking for data changes. Is that a good way to run an integration? Now we had 356. So it is fine. What if there were 3,000, or maybe 5,000, or maybe 30,000? The process would have been very, very inefficient. Right. So that's why having a transaction log makes so much sense, because now it did what? It's narrowed it down to only the workers who are hired or contracted between 1st of January till they're looking at 85 workers only. And then it looked for changes to those 85 workers and it got it. Correct. Now let me show you another trick. Now, instead of the hire business process, what if we choose something else? Let's go to the configure transaction log. Okay. And instead of the hire employee and the contract contingent worker, what if I am checking for contact change? One of the lesser used business processes, contact change, let me click OK. So I am now. My integration is subscribing to what? Only contact changes. Correct. Now, this integration was run for hire and contract contingent workers. Now I have changed it, but I will launch the integration with the same date parameters. I will go to Integration Event. I will relaunch this Integration Event. Why? Because I want to launch it with the exact same date parameters. OK. And I want to see if my output is the same or not. Remember in the previous run, when we were doing hire and contract contingent workers, we had 85 workers. Let me note it down. Right, so then we remember. So what were our parameters? Uh, last successful. Uh, as of entry moment. As of entry was 01012212200 last effective date. was 010122, right. And then, what was the? As of effective was 02. Zero 0522. And as of entry, was again 02. Oh, let's put it as 05. 02. Here also, it was 0502. That's ready to write. And then, what was the transaction log? Transaction log was subscribing to hire employee and contract contingent worker. 
Right. These are the two things that we were subscribing for. Correct. Hire employee and contract contingent worker. These are the two things that we were subscribing. Now we are changing this. Everything else remains the same. But only the transaction log is changed. The contact information change. Now can we try making some contact change and seeing what happens? Right, let's give it a try. So let's go to Jack Taylor. Right, let's go to Jack. Here's a manager of IT help this, and now let's change its contact information. Let's try. So we go to his actions. And let's go to his contact information, personal data. And change home contact information. Right, let's do that. Change home contact. And let's see what we have here. So, let's add a phone number. Let's not change something existing. Let's add something else. So I'm going to add a mobile. Okay. And let me add this phone number as 812-550-999. And the visibility is public. So everybody can see my phone number. And anything else? No, nothing. So I am creating a change in the contact information. Let's click on Submit. And it says it is done. It is done. The contact information has been changed. So let's quickly view the contact information again. So we go to personal data. Let's view the contact information. Okay. So now we have the other phone number as well, which is public. It's a photo pop-up, so that we have created now let's launch our integration one more time. Let's go and launch integration. And what is the option to do that? What is the integration? ITCCWWW. Right. This is our integration. I will use a Steam date parameters. But just the time is different, because I made the entry right now, so I need to have the correct time. But the last successful adorned country, I will use as 0101. And here I will say it's DP 0000000000000000000000. And here also I will say 0101 and click OK. Right, I have made a change now. Let's see if it gets picked up as part of the change process. Oh, it doesn't. It didn't pick up anybody. This is the process complete. I think the process completed. It was showing up as well. Okay, let me quickly check my transaction log. All right. So let's look at that. Configure integration transaction log. And see check contact change. Let's look at home. Or let me just check for contact. 
Oh, home contact change event right. So I did not check that. Let's use that home contact change. Right now, I'm subscribing to home contact change event as well. And let me relaunch the integration with the same parameters. Integration event. Relaunch integration event. I mean, I may have more workers, but I should definitely have Jack Taylor right. Because now I have changed the transaction log. I may see more workers. But at least, I should see Jack Taylor in my output file. Okay, this looking at the workers for changes. Five messages fine. It has looked for three workers. Three workers had some changes right. Please do like, share, and subscribe to our channel. For more information, contact us at sales at the rateuptalk.com.